many people are listening from around the globe, and God is truly an awesome God. Um, before, I'm, I'm going to share a testimony, but before, I just want to open with a prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, great God, we are so grateful, thankful for your righteousness, your power, and your glory. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have been doing and how you have been moving in many of your children's life. And as we assemble together on this Sabbath hour, I ask you, Lord, to move and to empower and to protect this prayer line from any distraction. And if there's somebody on, Lord, who is wrestling and going through battle and and fighting, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will break every yoke and you will destroy Satan, Lord, and you will lose your people tonight as we worship, as we fellowship together in one accord. So take control now, Holy Spirit, of this prayer line, and let everything be done according to your will. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Praise God. Before I open up the word, um, I just want to welcome, um, I heard Sister Walters was sharing her testimony of how good God is. But I spoke to her earlier on about fasting, and she really shocked me when she said she was really fasting in her time as she walking with the Lord. And I just want to ask her a few questions concerning fasting. Sister Walters, are you on tonight? Yes, I'm You here. unmute your phone. Praise, Praise, Praise God. Praise God. And where are you calling from, Sister Walters? Uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. Silver Spring. Praise the Lord. I could hear in your voice how much you love the Lord. You have a passion for his work. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I spoke to you earlier on about fasting. And you told me that you fasted for 40 days. Could you just tell whoever is listening, did you fast without any food at all, without water? Could you share with us a little bit about fasting for 40 days? Go ahead. Yes, I have fasted for many 40 days, but I did one 40 days by myself without any water and without any food. And I did it all by myself and with the Lord and I never got hungry and the Lord took me through it. I lost a lot of weight, but I wasn't doing it for the weight. I just did it because Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights and I just wanted to to go through it too and I did. Wow, that's amazing. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I could see some people going seven days, ten days with water, but you challenge. Do you know that um, Christ came and he lived that example that we can fast for that 40 days? And you know that if we go more than 40 days, there is no protection there. But the Lord fasted 40 days as an example. So what was your spiritual walk like, fasting for 40 days? It was very, very, very good. Um, I was very close to the Lord. Um, Some of my friends that knew that I was doing it, they were kind of worried for me because uh, they didn't want me to get sick. And um, like my pastor, I didn't tell them that I was doing it. And, you know, my pastor saw me and he said, Sonia, are you sick? What's wrong with you? Why are you losing so much weight? You know? But um, I know I had a glow on my face and I know I felt good in the Lord. And um, it, 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 I didn't have any pain. I 
didn't feel hungry. I read the Bible, and I prayed, and I worked. I did it while I was working. So Mercy. It was an experience, and I kept a journal about it. I'm a fasting person. I fast all the time. So, um, you know, to me, if I'm fasting, I don't get hungry. But I, I will get hungry when I'm not fasting. Okay, wow. I mean, it's really impressive to see how the Lord, because a lot of people are contemplating fasting for 30 days and they will break their fast in the evening they will break it occasionally but i was really moved when you told me you fasted for 40 days without even water mercy no water and i still went to the bathroom i did go to the bathroom so it wasn't like i wasn't going to the bathroom or anything i did go to the bathroom so, Mercy. You know, I was able to urinate. So. Mercy. So you would encourage um, God's people to take the challenge of fasting more, and we will be empowered. You will be able to get to that point. It's a journey, and um, if you put your mind to it and decide that you're going to do it, a good thing. And I do a lot of the extra fast also. Um, the fast for three days and three nights without eating and drinking. That one I do also. Mercy, mercy. And if you wouldn't mind share with the congregation that is listening, how old are you? I am 75 years old just last month. But when I Great. did this, um, it was like about eight years ago. Mm-hmm. So I was wow. so in, up in age then, too. Mercy. Well, I know a lot of people are taking notes because we need powerful prayer warrior. We could hear how vibrant and strong you are in the Lord and in the physical that you are strong in the Lord. And the Lord is going to sustain you. And we're going to see the Lord do mighty work through you. Amen. So is, is there anything you want to encourage anybody on tonight before we move on? Yes, I would just like to encourage everyone, each and every one. To, like one of the sisters says tonight, she was a prayer warrior. And now she's a warrior warrior. And now she's coming back. Sometimes we falter because, you know, I was praying with two of my prayer partners the other day on Wednesday. And I said, Lord, you know, I used to go and visit people and pray for people who are sick. And um, at one time I went to the hospital and um, prayed with the Lord sent me to the hospital in Baltimore to pray for this person. I didn't even know how I was going to go. I got up and I got dressed. I'm going to pray to pray about Peter, the shadow of Peter, and people would get healed in John 5, Acts 5. And um, I was saying, Lord, what, what is happening to me now? I used to do all these things and I'm not doing them anymore. What happened, Lord? You know, it's like you know, you just slip and slide but some along the way the Lord will pick you up again because said a righteous man falls seven times and he gets up but the wicked man, he only falls one time and never gets up. So be empowered in the Lord and the Lord knows our weaknesses and he knows our strength and he will strengthen us if we give him our will and be willing, he will use us. So hold on to the faith and hold on to the hands that never fail us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. 
Sister Walters. We will be hearing more and more from Sister Walters. She's a powerful woman of God with the experience, and she said she had fasted 40 days. And I know some of us are contemplating that move. She worked while doing it, and she stayed without drinking evil water, and the Lord sustained her. It's because of the faith. Through Christ, we can do all things. And tonight, as we fellowship together, God is going to do a mighty work. Tonight, the Lord led me to two sets of scriptures I'll be reading from. And the first one is found in the book of Joel. And Joel is after Hosea, Ezekiel, around there, Daniel, somewhere around there, after Daniel going around. Joel, that little book. And the book of Joel talks about locusts. About the, 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 the land was going through a famine. And if you do the study, you could say up to say four years of famine, drought, nothingness. Because the locusts came up and ate up. I don't know if you ever heard of locusts in your country of origin, where you're from. But locusts, you could say then, is... Um, uh, lo- locust, um, you could find it in Joel chapter 1, um, verse uh, verse 3, I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be reading from, ver- from verse 3, Joel chapter 1. But I'm just giving you some highlights about Joel, that the locust, I don't know if you know what locust is, but this is like, grasshopper and they move in great company many thousands I don't know if anybody ever witnessed anything like this and when they move they do extensive damage devastation this is called an invasion it's like an army an invasion we're talking about millions and when they enter that crop, whether it's be corn, barley, whatever it is, when they pass through it, only the stubble, everything will be eaten. It's worse than earthquake, than hurricane. Locust is destructive. And here in Joel, it was talking about the locust that God allowed to happen. And you will see, we're going to read all those scriptures that showed us that. But great, powerful things was happening. And listen, let's go to verse 3 of Joel chapter 1. Get your Bibles. This is almost like a Bible study here. And here it says, Tell ye your children of it. And let your children tell their children and their children other generation and other generation that wish the palmer worm has left, has the locust eaten, and what the locust has left has the canker worm eaten, and what the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. Utter destruction was happening. Utter destruction. When I read it and the Lord was speaking to me a while ago when I looked at it, the Lord was showing me that if you look on the the physical famine and the destruction that famine brings in Ethiopian There are different parts around the globe where people are eating out of garbage because there's no food. The land is barren, desolate, nothing, nothingness. And while the Lord spoke to me, the Lord was directing me and saying, imagine then 
the spiritual walk of God's people? How does the locust affect the spiritual land? I'm telling you, in the physical, we know there's famine going on around the globe. There's famine in in Somalia, as somebody said, and, and many other places around the globe have famine now. But what about the spiritual famine? What was happening that God allowed the locusts to come and to eat? Have the locusts been eating your land? What about the direction that the Lord wanted to take you four years ago? What about the calling that the Lord has placed on your life four years ago? And you decided, I don't want to do it. And God is leading you in one direction and you turn away and said, I do not want to do it. Because you want to do your own thing. Destruction. This is like a locust, you see, not being obedient to the word of God. And when these people were going through so much with no food, they recognized that there is a need. Have you recognized tonight that the Lord has been calling you and you have been going off on a different tangent, a different direction, a different pathway. And what do you do when you recognize that the Lord is calling you? Because the days are numbered. Christ is about to come. He's talking about the spiritual locust that has been eating away God's people from spending time in the Word. The spiritual locust of television, that people spend more time on television than with God. People spend more time going to parties and doing things that go against the principle of God. God is saying that's a spiritual locust. These people have no physical food. They were in distress. Are you in distress tonight? Because God's people are weakened, and we need a revival. We need to hear from Jesus. Do you have that desire tonight that the land is barren? We are like empty barrels. We pray and nothing is happening. We seek for jobs and we can't get no jobs. Because spiritually, we are not there. I want you to look at verse 14 in Joel chapter 1. Because you see, this thing is serious. I want you to keep in mind that there is a great devastation caused by the locusts. It's an invasion. The enemy is invading God's people their mind with the music and different things, pride and self, is dominating God's people. And the Lord is saying to his people tonight, in verse 14, Sanctify he a fast, call a solemn assemble, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land in the house of the Lord your God, and Cry unto the Lord. Mercy. Mercy. That is a personal invitation. God is saying, if you are going through the nothingness where locust has already been eating everything you have, nothing is working in the spiritual realm. God is calling his people to recognize it and to call a solemn fast. Sanctify the people. Get your family together. Get the prayer team together and cry unto the Lord. Verse 15 says, Alas, for the day, the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction 
from the Almighty shall it come. Mercy. He says, cry out. Cry out. Recognize where you are with Christ tonight and cry out. If you are comfortable, it meant that there's no locust eating your land. You're spiritually well. You're puffed up and filled up. You don't need nothing. You don't have any need for anything. The Lord is saying, God's judgment is at hand. He's calling his people to repentance. There is no playing around with this thing. God is calling his people tonight. He's calling you and I that there is high time in Zion. He's calling his people to a solemn fast. Because there is high time. I want to look now. Go to Joel chapter 2. Go to Joel chapter 2 and hear what the Lord has to say. Turn with me to verse 15. We're going to jump different parts of it because God is going to show us something seriously. In verse 15, remember what we're saying right now. Please, you have to understand what the Lord is showing his children this hour. God is saying, listen. Listen what he says now in verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. God is repeating it and says, listen, this locust is a physical thing, spiritual thing. Some people are suffering in material things, going through trials. But the ultimate is the spiritual. And the Lord is saying, call a fast. And not only that, I'm going to bless you spiritually but also physically. I want to look at the next verse after that. It says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth to his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Mercy. We don't get it yet. This is serious. In the next verse it says, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spear thy people. This is the day. Underline that little phrase right there. Spear thy people. Please. In verse 17. God is saying, listen. We need to pray intercessory prayers. We need to recognize where we are. He's saying a famine is upon the land. Locust is destroying God's people in sin. And we need to recognize it and call a fast. We heard Sister Walter, 75 years old, a prayer warrior. God has chosen her for a time like this. Age doesn't matter. She's going to be powerful for Jesus. God has called her in a time like this, where she fasted eight years ago for 40 days without any food or water. Can you do it for the Lord? Are you weeping between the porch and the pews? On the altar, are you weeping? It meant that the priests and the ministers of God, leaders, are they recognizing that this is a real famine? Satan and his army is invading God's people. People are going through many evil. God is calling his people tonight and says, are you willing to go at the church and weep on behalf of your families and friends and the people around the world. And then the key that the Lord says in verse 17, 
Ask the Lord to spare thy people. Don't let the army of locusts overrun us. Don't let Satan and his legions of demons destroy us through lust and sexual sin and lies and all different things. He said we should plea and beg God for help. Are you feeling it tonight that you need to call a fast? Are you thinking about doing this? Then it says, Steer thy people, in verse 17, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? If we allow the enemy to run us over, what is the world going to say? Why do we go to church on Sundays and Sabbath? Why do we go to church? Mercy. Verse 18, it's going to become more powerful as we go through this. Verse 18, it says, Then will the Lord be je jealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord is begging that we pray and ask him to get rid of the locusts, the sin that is like plagues, the sin that is in the millions that will devastate us and our families. When it comes upon the crop, it just eats up everything. The crop is over. There's famine. God is giving us the physical destruction of locusts, of what it will do. God is saying to his people tonight, wake up and understand this thing and pray. Pray one for each other. And he says, when you pray, God is saying in verse 19, Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn, mercy and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Lord, have mercy. That's a promise. God is saying if his people weep sincerely from our hearts, he's going to replenish. He said if we weep in the name of Jesus Christ, God is going to do something supernaturally powerful if we come to him. But first we have to recognize and weep. We got to pray. We got to need put away food. Put away the television. Put away certain things and spend time in the word and weep. Mercy. And then he said, you could, you see in verse 19, where he said, behold, I will send you corn, the physical corn. But you could move the spiritual and put in the spiritual word and say blessings. You could say long suffering. You could say joy in the time of the storm. You could say gladness. You could say mercy. You could change the corn into different words. You could put wine and say clean water, shelter in the time of storm. I'm telling you, you could replace it with the blessing, the spiritual blessing, the fruit of the spirit. He said he will replenish. But you don't get it yet. You don't get the full story yet. Verse 20 says, but I will remove far, far from you the northern army. Mercy, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things. God is saying destruction is going to come. For, pe for the enemy that attacks God's people. This is talking about the judgment that Satan and his army is going to be destroyed. God is going to move them far away from the promised land, from the corn and the blessing and the milk and the honey. 
God is going to make a separation. He said, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. That's the Lucas. That's the lust. That's the stealing. That's the killing. That's the disobedience. That's the sin. If we confess and repent and come to Christ, I will remove everything from you. What a God we serve. What a mighty rock. He's just saying all we have to do is cry out from the heart. And God is going to do a mighty, mighty work. Mercy. You haven't seen anything yet. Stay with me. In verse 21, he says, Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. The Lord is saying tonight, don't think that this anything is hard for God. I can restore you if you cry out. If you call out, I am able to restore you and replenish you. I am able. He said, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastors of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. That is replenishing. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord for your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Mercy. I don't know if you're getting this. We're talking about Holy Ghost power. You see, this is a spiritual thing, but God is mixing it with the physical. God is showing his people, say, listen, listen, listen up. He's comparing it to the physical. He said, when I start to replenish you, that's just a little rain. If you continue to weep between the porch and the altar, it's going to be more powerful. You think you're seeing power yet? Do you think you're seeing spiritual gifts, yes, and blessings? He said, wait until the latter rain comes. Wait until it's more rain, you see. God is comparing it that when the fruits of your life start to spring up, it needs rain. When the blessings and the power that God has given his people start to come forth because we're praying. More rain is going to come. The rain is just falling a little bit now, but it's going to come in power. Listen, and then it says in verse 24, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Those are spiritual blessings. God is saying, when the Holy Spirit come upon you because you're spending time in the Word, The blessing is going to come with power. You're going to have the spirit of authority that when you come and raise your hand, people will tremble. We heard the sister talk about uh, Peter's shadow, healing people. This is Holy Ghost power. This is the flower. This is the vats overflowing. This is the wine and the oil overflowing. The blessings. God is using these material things because we can't get it. Some of us will identify with oil. You don't understand. It's Holy Ghost power God is talking about. You don't get it yet because many people are not in the world. We can't get it. It's gone over our head. We're just thinking about food. We don't get it. We don't get it. But I want to tell you something. The powerful verse that the Lord gave me is verse 25. And it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. I want you to underline that. God is going to restore the years that he has been calling you and you waste time 
four years ago, the Lord has been calling you to get baptized and restored so you can receive the Holy Ghost power. And you refuse. You took your own pathway and went down to destruction. You have gone through brokenness and pain because you have made the wrong choice to follow himself. If you had just listened to the Lord. But what a God. He said, I'm going to wipe out those years when you were skidding. You were just going in a circle in your spiritual life, in your physical life. No jobs, working on the Sabbath, and now you have no money. You are broke. I was calling you, but you wouldn't listen. But because I'm a loving God, I'm going to restore it. I'm going to cancel those zero years. I'm going to cancel those years when you were just an adulterer and you're doing nothing while I was calling you. I'm going to erase it from your record. I'm going to replenish. I'm going to restore the power that I've called you for. I've called you. That's why the Lord is calling certain people tonight. And he said, I want to restore the power that I've called you. He said, before you were born, I have ordained you. Before you were conceived, I know you by name. I call you Sister Barbara. He said, from before Keithia was born, I call you by name. Before Sister Chana was born, before Sister Melanie was born, I called you. God is just saying, I've called you, I've ordained you for so long, but you are not listening to me, and you're going in a circle, and nothing is happening for you. But because I care, because I love you, because I love you so much, I'm going to restore everything that the locust has eaten, everything that has rightfully should be yours, I'm going to give it to you now, because I'm a loving God. That's what God wants to do tonight. Restoration is here. Hallelujah. All we have to do is repent and take up the rightful position that the Lord has given us. God is calling you. God is calling Israel. He's calling spiritual Israel. He's calling his people now. We don't get it yet. Mercy. Listen, the Lord said, listen again. I'm going to read verse 25 again. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the conquer worm and the caterpillar and the pal- palmer worm and the great army, with my great army which I sent amongst you. God allowed it to happen. Because we are disobedient. God allowed the conquer worm because he was calling you and you refused it. And now you are broken. But the Lord still said, I will restore you. And look at verse 26. It says, and he shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that you have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Not only that, he says, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. You know what that verse is saying? I want you to underline, circle that whole verse. You know what it's saying? It's saying that whenever we invite Christ back in the midst of him, that verse said that when we invite him back in the midst, we will never go hungry. Some of us don't have Christ. The conquer worm has been eating us. Because Christ is not in our home. Christ is not in the midst. Christ is not in our life. Christ is not with us in our workplaces. But the Lord is saying, if you invite me back and I'm in the midst, listen what he's going to do if he's in the midst. 
he said in verse 28, as he is in the midst, in verse 27, he said, listen to what he said he's going to do. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, and blood and fire and pillars of smoke, mercy. That's the God we serve. He's going to do a mighty work. He's going to do a mighty work. Are you waking up, saints of God? Are you waking up before it's get too late? The Lord is echoing his voice tonight and says, wake up, my people, before it's too late. I want to close with two verses. Go back, Joel 2, verse 1 and 2, I'm going to read. Joel chapter 2, that same verse, chapter, just go back to verse 1. And the Lord is saying to us tonight, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, they have not been ever like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Never, never been such a time like what is coming. God is calling his people tonight and said, if you hear my voice tonight, harden not your heart. Tonight, if locust is getting you down the sin, he's calling you tonight to repent. Repent and move forth to be rebaptized or to be baptized. Because God is calling his people. Time is running out. Brethren, time is running out. God is calling his people tonight and said, my people, wake up. The day of the Lord is at hand. Wake up, I said, my people, wake up. The day of the Lord is at hand. If you hear his voice tonight as I'm about to pray, because this is war. This is no joke. As I'm about to pray tonight, if you're making a decision for Christ, I'm going to pray right now. Father in heaven, great God, you're seeing your people wrestling tonight. We want to be saved. But there's too many locusts, oh God. Only you can help us. We're lost. In the battle, the army is up against us, and we have no strength, no power. Fight for us, Holy Spirit, right now. Fight for somebody who's struggling right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Allow your power to move. Allow your servant, somebody to be rescued tonight, oh God. Because you're a mighty, mighty, powerful God whom we serve. Hear your people, Lord. Rescue us, O God, from the locusts. Pour out your spirit, O God, upon your people, upon your church tonight. Let us experience your power. I thank you, O God, as we receive it. I give you all the glory, all the praise. And I Thank you for hearing, for answering in the precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Praise God. God is just awesome. Just go back and read those scriptures.